The service of evening prayer for this second Wednesday in Lent begins on page 117 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you'd like to follow along. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 119, verses 89 through 96. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness remains from one generation to another. You establish the earth and it abides. By your decree, these continue to this day, for all things are your servants. If my delight had not been in your law, I should have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your commandments, because by them you give me life. I am yours, oh, that you would save me, for I study your commandments. Though the wicked lie in wait for me to destroy me, I will apply my mind to your decrees. I see that all things come to an end, but your commandment has no bounds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The scripture appointed for this evening is taken from the Gospel according to St. John in the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. After the second sign in Cana, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath, it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They said to him, They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take, up, take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for this evening is Canticle 15, the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things 
and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The scripture appointed for this evening takes us into the gospel according to John in the fifth chapter. So we're early on. In fact, it's just after the second uh, of these signs that Jesus is giving us. We hear in this day what it's like to be waiting on the side. There's a story of miraculous healing. It is one of the great miracles and signs that Jesus is giving. There is a reason that the evangelist has Jesus giving these signs, but even more, there seems to be something else at work here. I can't help but to feel penetrated by Jesus' direct question to the man, do you want to be made well? Why not? Of course, I've been waiting there for 38 years, it says. You've been waiting for a long time when someone else goes ahead of him. Jesus simply gives him a directive much more simply than we've ever expected from the description of what the location is. The, maid, the man is made well. But not all is well with what Jesus has just done. In fact, the authorities are grumbling and outright hostile at Jesus for doing this on the Sabbath. It's as if they want to worship the rules itself, and we've gotten confused with what has been a tool and a measurement something to help us along the way, getting it confused with the way itself or the destination. And when confronted, the man says, I, I'm just following the directions. Of whom? Of, I'm not really sure. When Jesus says, look, you've been made well, he goes back and says, it's Jesus. You can almost sense his excitement. It's this person we've been hearing about. And yet, this gives all the more reason for the authorities to question Jesus. How dare you work on the Sabbath? How dare you do these things? And Jesus says, my father is still at work. I'm still at work. But what is going on is people's discontent with going beyond the norms, going beyond the conventional thinking. Jesus is saying, don't get these means or these tools confused with the very enterprise we're supposed to be about. This is about wholeness and healing. This is about restoration, coming home. The Sabbath and all the laws have just been used as a tool, but they're not going to be a substitute for the really real dynamic faith that we have, the destination of being, with, being made whole with our Creator, with God, the God whom He calls Father so intimate. That name which was almost unspeakable up to that point is now so directly intimate. And this yet again is all the more reasons why people are raging about Jesus. How dare you take something that's been so profoundly a part of our foundations that we have to bow down to it, we have to walk away from it, not look at it in the eye, and now you're saying it's the most intimate part of our lives? How dare you? How dare indeed? How dare we walk into our faith journey, realize what God is calling us to be about? How dare we move beyond the limits that other people have placed on us? How dare we use such things that have been our devices to explore what God has in store even more? even more. That's what Lent is all about. Even more. Even more. Listen. Even more. Come back. Even more. Realize what God is calling us to be about, not just in Lent, but all our days. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For this evening, let us use Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it always is to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Have compassion on those who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week. Carol, Elizabeth, Gloria, Greer, Jim, Johnny, Pax, Peggy, Robert, Sherry, Susan, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus. I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings offered at this time. For all these and those we've named in our hearts, let us give over to God as we use the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your, our praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.